Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. So I wanted to record a video uh, just demonstrating something I've been doing for a number of months now with YouTube. And if I may be so immodest, I think it's a pretty decent idea. One of maybe my better ideas I've had um, over the last year in terms of tech stuff. And that is basically setting up a testing channel for YouTube. And I wanted to just take um, a few moments in this video to kind of just talk through why you might want to do that, why I did that, um, and what I use it for, uh, just to kind of give you an idea if you're also starting out on your YouTubing journey, just like I am, and you want a separate place to kind of test with. Now, um, there are a couple of reasons that you might want a different channel, but before I even get into that, let me uh, bring across here the terms of service. And the caveat here is I'm not 100% certain doing something like this is kosher, via v youtube and the reason that it's that i'm sort of checking this and mentioning this is that it's always a good idea to um, at least make an effort to figure this out now if you wanted to dig deeper into this question you could probably youtube are very hard to get hold of uh, someone at the company but they do have community forums there are a few active uh, subreddits so you could try asking around there but i suspect it's fine uh, but these are in any event the YouTube terms of service which you can find easily available on the internet and I just did a search within this document uh, for channel and I just saw what was there um, and um, under the section Google accounts and YouTube channel they basically say uh, you can use parts of the service without having a Google account however you do need a Google account for some features um, with the Google account you may be able to like videos uh, subscribe to channels and create your own YouTube channel. Um, so that's not really saying anything uh, particularly revolutionary or that anybody who uses YouTube doesn't know um, already that you need a Google account to create a YouTube channel. Um, you know, they say the channels can't uh, violate YouTube's con uh, content policies. Um, and there is a separate section about that. Um, you may use your content to promote your business or artistic emphasize. You must not submit to the service any content that does not comply with this agreement or the law such as copyrighted material. I'm just gonna uh, put myself down here just for a few moments. Um, you are legally responsible for the content you submit. We may use automated systems that analyze your content to help detect infringement and abuse such as spam, malware, and illegal content. So um, I tried digging through this um, these terms and conditions and um, I didn't see anything that said to me, obviously, uh, you know, uh, YouTubers cannot uh, operate a channel for the purpose of testing uh, their footage. I didn't see anything like that, but I just wanted to be totally transparent and say that uh, you, you know, do this at your own uh, discretion. Now, in terms of how many accounts you can set, how many channels you can set up with any one Google account. So something just to realize is that um, according to this article, now that was from 2019 from Harsh Agrawal. Um, Thanks to YouTube for coming up with the great idea of multiple YouTube channels under a single Gmail account. By the way, also a G Suite account or what's now called uh, Google uh, Workspaces. You can create up to 50 YouTube channels. Um, so you're, you're not gonna run into any limitation regarding the number of channels. And when you go and create a channel in uh, YouTube, you are creating a new brand account. So uh, there's a difference between a Gmail account or a Google account, whether we're talking Gmail or we're talking Google Workspaces and a brand account. But in any event, you can have up to 50 brand accounts on one Gmail account. And if you're like most people, you're not gonna come anywhere near that 50 limit, even if you do keep a couple of channels for testing. So I just wanted to firstly make that make those couple of uh, points clear. Now, how do you go and create a new YouTube channel? Uh, so there is what I like to think of as the magic URL, uh, and that is youtube.com forward slash channel underscore switcher. And I just kind of put it up here. Now, the reason I call it the magic URL is that's where you get to this nice page, which has your channels. And I have not found it through the back end, and I've heard other people saying the same thing like it's just not there in the menus and this is like such a vital url um please correct me in a comment if it is there in any event it's not hard to uh put that url into your bookmarks 
And once you're at that URL, you can shift between your different brand accounts if you have multiple ones. Um, and you can also uh, get to your, uh, create a new channel. Now, just another recommendation is if you are using, um, creating a YouTube brand account for a personal channel, um, I personally think it's not a good idea to use your default brand account. Every Gmail account um, and G Suite or Google Work Workspaces account comes with its own um, YouTube. You can just go into YouTube and click on create a channel. Now, um, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend that even if you're only planning and operating one channel without any intention to do uh, you know, something like a, a testing account, nevertheless, I think it's good to keep that separate so that if you want to, if you're gonna start working with, um, I don't know, a marketing agency and you want to add managers to that brand account that it's already gonna be a separate entity to your main YouTube account. So that's just my personal recommendation um, on that front. Now let's get back to, let's get back to this. So um, if you've gone through the channel switcher, you can now create a new channel. And I just called mine very imaginatively Daniel Rosal uh, testing, but you can, uh, you know, you can, you can use your own um, imagination to figure something out. Now I have set up a couple of these. One was called uh, Daniel Rosal staging, and my my idea there was to have some kind of a workflow whereby um, I would put in videos that were sort of um, in the process of development, and if I wanted to show them to um, somebody for feedback, uh, let's say a creative partner or an internet community, that rather than show them something living on my actual YouTube channel, I would have a staging channel and that would just kind of keep those things separate. Now, probably not necessary, but uh, if you have that 50 limit, I kind of say, if it's okay with Google, build out a few different resources for yourself. Now, uh, let me talk about the, uh, the testing channel and what you might want to use it for. Um, so let me just go back in here to the channel and the advanced settings permission. And let's start this with looking at the, uh, looking at the channel first of all. So um, once you've got your new channel set up, this is the testing channel I've just created. Uh, there are a couple of things I would typically do or change in the settings, right? Firstly, uh, you might want to add brand managers. So let's just think of a situation in which um, I'll give you a real one. So I'm thinking about live streaming a wedding for a friend in a couple of days. Now this is actually a real thing. My friend is having a wedding um, on Friday and he hasn't figured out like the live stream aspect of the wedding. And he's like, he asked me if I could like help him out and I'm looking into options. Um, one of those being doing a live stream on YouTube now the same logic applies if I'm going to be testing, doing something like streaming different cameras from OBS. Um, I would rather do that on a separate channel that I'm not going to be sending out to anybody, whether that's subscribers or uh, just you know people at the wedding, let's say. So that's just another example of that. Now, one thing I should point out is that when you, when you um, enable yourself access to the more advanced YouTube features, that goes on a channel by channel basis. Now, uh, what I mean by those features is stuff like um, uploading videos that are more than 15 minutes in length or creating live streams, uh, whether those are live live streams that you create on the fly or whether those are scheduled live streams. So before YouTube lets you live stream, from a desktop, it needs you need to validate your cell phone, and then that process takes 24 hours. Now, all this applies at the time of recording. So um, you want to go and do that on if you're going to be testing out live streaming from this sort of a thing, a testing channel. You want to go ahead and do that 24 hours before you want to do the tests. Second thing again is regarding the um, upload limit of 15 minutes. If you want to get rid of that, it's going to be a problem for your testing account then just know that even if you've done that on your main account, you're gonna to have to do it again uh, because this is considered a separate channel. It's considered a separate brand account. It's kind of like its own um, entity in the world of uh, Google insofar as that, you know, you can add different brand managers than are on your main account. So it's like its own thing. 
and therefore even if you've gone through that validation once you're going to have to go through that validation again so um if you so here's just kind of a few changes i would make or that would come to mind and there's only actually one key one so I'd go into channel settings um, and I would change the visibility to either private or unlisted. Now, um, the difference between those is that when you have a private URL in uh, YouTube, it's just visible um, according to which uh, Google accounts it's been shared with. So you have to share it each time with a different Google account and unlisted is much more powerful. Technically a little bit riskier because it's a URL that anybody with that link can see. So um, for this use case uh, for my friend's wedding, I would probably actually do, no, I'd probably do private because they're both on Gmail and I would add them both as brand managers or I would do unlisted. For this one, uh, let's go, uh, for this demo channel, let's go with uh, private um, for the moment. And that means the default upload setting is going to be private. So I don't really need to worry so much because um, if I'm just going into my phone and quickly trying out new microphones and I wanna say, hey, what are those gonna sound like on YouTube after YouTube has processed the video? And that's exactly the kind of thing I would use this uh, testing channel for because you know I know what, my, uh, what it's gonna sound like by recording it, that's pretty easy. Uh, but if I wanna see what it's gonna sound like in YouTube, then uh, the best way to do that would be to go through uh, this process of uh, trial and error and seeing how that would actually sound. Um, so, um, you know, you could add more things here. For instance, I'm going to add um, that, uh, you know, testing video, please do not share this URL publicly or with external parties. I, I probably wouldn't put something as as corporate sounding as this, but you get the idea. If you're making videos with um, sort of a buddy or a couple of friends and uh, you wanna play around amongst yourselves, you could add um, one another as channel managers and um, that would mean that you'd both be able to uh, upload to this testing channel from your YouTube app. So your friends on a different Gmail, you're on a Google Workspace account or G Suite, it doesn't matter. Add them as a manager into the brand account um, I'm just gonna show you where that screen is as well. Uh, that is that screen, this is this is the screen that looks like this. You have uh, brand account details and there's a little um, user box here where it says manage permissions. Now none of this is permanent, which is pretty cool. Um, so that if you later decide that you uh, don't want to have this testing account and you're happy to get rid of the videos, you might have seen on that last screen, there was a little button saying delete account and uh, you can just delete the brand account. So that's basically everything I really kind of have to say about uh, these testing accounts. Um, you know, I would configure the uh, permissions to uh, upload defaults to private. And there's one more thing actually that I'm going to show. Um, and that is that I would take off the uh, I would just try to keep this channel sort of out, hoping to do everything in your power um, to prevent people from discovering it, which is probably the exact opposite of what you'd want to do with a typical channel. So um, again, because this is testing, I, I always do this. I don't, um, I've never produced um, made for kids content. I don't have any intention of doing so. Um, therefore, I, I would uh, turn that off so you don't get those annoying prompts every time you upload a video. Is this for kids? And it's not. And the second thing I was gonna recommend is display the number of people. Now, I actually have this hidden on my main channel. And that's just because I sort of don't like the idea of um, everybody being able to see when you know I picked up a subscriber, I lost a subscriber, um, yeah, it's just a bit of pressure that I feel like I can live without, especially while I'm in the sort of earlier phases of growth uh, for my YouTube channel. Um, feature eligibility, let me just show you that also where you can check that out. Um, and uh, that is that is this little screen here. So you can see features that require phone verification, uh, custom thumbnails, live streams, and videos over 15 minutes. Now on my actual YouTube channel, the one uh, you're watching this video on right now, I've gone through the phone verification process, uh, therefore I can do live streaming, 
Um, I can do videos longer than 15 minutes, etc. But this is considered a new entity. Um, therefore, I am um, not able to do that. And I'm gonna need to just after I record this, um, I'm going to need to go through that process from scratch. Can I create problems having the same phone number tied to multiple brand accounts for verification purposes? I have no idea about that question. It's possible um, and it's possible, it's possible that it doesn't. So that wasn't very helpful. Uh, let me just show you one final thing and that's just, you know, there's a, there is a way to test um, how well all this is working for you. Um, and that is basically to just sort of run a search um, on yourself through um, YouTube from a guest browsing window. So go into incognito mode on uh, Google Chrome or some other web browser. And uh, then you can go to YouTube and just search for yourself. So I've searched here for Daniel Rosehill. Um, it's funny because it actually includes in the count. I definitely do not have 426 videos. And the reason there's so many videos here is because um, sort of this, before I separated out this process, this was uh, my process. I would put these testing videos up into my main YouTube account. Uh, therefore, it's um, totaling everything for that number. But, um, you know, do a search for yourself and just see if anything you don't want to do, you, that you don't want to be showing up on YouTube. And this is as a regular person would search for it is, is not showing is showing up. So if you can click on to filters and click on to channel um, and you can see that perhaps there's a couple of other ch other uh, channels you've set up and I don't see. I don't see it. Um, I also see that my subscriber number is hidden, uh, which is good. That's the way I wanted to set it up. And I'm just searching for staging, um, which is one of the channels that I set up. And there's a couple of videos there. And you can see that if you don't publicize your channel, don't publicize your videos, it doesn't look to your average YouTube um, browser as if this exists. There's no, there's nothing showing up here. There's just videos showing up from my main YouTube account that I guess I've used the word staging in or staging is in the automated transcript. Therefore, they're showing up in search results, but for all intents and purposes, um, that channel is not visible. Uh, not that it's gonna show up by any chance when I just created it, but testing, there's no, um, there's no evidence of it. There's just this video I did a couple of weeks ago on a um, Delta flight uh, where I was testing out microphones and therefore that's keyword matching for uh, testing, but the channel itself is effectively hidden. So that's how you can set up a couple of additional channels on your YouTube, whether you want just one for uh, the purposes of testing, whether you want one, another one for staging and one for testing, whatever the case may be. I do think that if you are um, working in a uh, creative workflow with a couple of other people on a YouTube channel, such as you're working with a marketing agency, you're working with a brand manager or something of that nature, um, I think having one or two extra channels that you know the upload default setting is private, it's not gonna get, it's not gonna slip out to your public channel, uh, which might have a ton of subscribers. Um, I think that's something quite, uh, quite valuable to do. Um, and I found it very helpful so far. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope it was useful. If you'd like to get more video content from me, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel.